Oh God, that we need you and that you, let your spirit, oh God, minister to us. Let your spirit, oh God, speak to us. Let your word become alive. Let your word, oh God, become a healing to our soul. Let your word, Father, be life that will open up our spiritual eyes, our ears, so that we may become sensitive that we may become living beings, oh God. Father, we praise you, we thank you, Lord God. I pray that you will use me as a vessel, oh God, to transmit your message to your children this morning. Thank you, Lord God, because by your grace, oh God, you will do it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This morning, we want to just want to eat the food that our Father has given us and I just pray that you will have your own share as I will have mine. Mm. Amen. Amen. We are before the Lord and to feast, to eat, to the word of God is likened to food, to feed our souls, feeding our spirits. Just as we eat physical food, we need the word so that our spiritual, our spiritual lives will be well nourished. We are going to read today from the book of Luke 15. Luke 15. That will be our main text. Luke chapter 15, verses 11, and we are 24. Luke 15, 11 to 24. Can somebody read? Luke 15, from 11 to 24. The heading says, Jesus tells the parable of the lost son. 11. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So, the, so he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed his pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here, am I, here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sent against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Amen. Amen. Is that 24? 24. Sorry, it was 21. 22. But the father said to his servant, But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So he began to celebrate. So they began to celebrate. Amen. 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 So this morning I want to put a title: the decision that saves life. The decision that saves life. And in this parable, uh, which is called the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son, in some versions, we learn of a story of this younger son who had an ambition. He had 
he was seeing a vision and it was like he was not satisfied to be at home and the way that he was the second position son and he thought that maybe the father was too controlling or something he was not satisfied that's all but he thought that getting freedom will be the best thing so he asked the father to give his own share just his own um, portion of his inheritance let him go and live his life as he wished let him have freedom to to control whatever belongs to him a lot of the times we want to have full control over our lives, our issues, and sometimes believers will see God or God's word or God's law or God, what God expects to be like a hindrance to many. And that is how this child was seeing the home. The father was like a hindrance and he wanted to have full rights to do whatever he liked. So this was, in the parable here, they are talking of investment, capital, um, money. That was the share of inheritance that he, he, he was talking about here. He sold everything, they, maybe he had, they were cattle for him and whatever, everything he had, he converted it to cash so that he could carry it and go, whether it's millions or whatever, he carried it along to go and live his life as best as he decided, as best as he could in his own view. But the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. He didn't see. He didn't see that what looks good may end up in death. What seemed, what the dream he had, maybe he had peers. Uh, his uh, mates in school or somewhere who were saying, oh, your father is very rich, but he is stingy. He doesn't want to give you uh, money now. He doesn't want to buy you the best phone, the best everything now. He is not doing good to you. If I were you, I would take the money. I would ask for my money and go and live the way I like. Maybe they were dreaming of all the kind of things that their friends could uh, get by with money. And your father has the money. He is not being fair to you. Take all the money so that you go and buy everything you need. Everything you like, your friends will like. Whatever you are hearing that your friends have, you can have it right now. But your father is the problem. So he bought the idea and went on and asked. And the father, even though it's a parable, but the father in the context just agreed. The, he had what he had to go. He locked, Then he set off for a far country. That is, he didn't want any influence of the father on him. He didn't want any parental influence, control. No, I should go all far, far away from him, if I'm near, then he will continue to influence me. So let me go very, very far. And he went. Well, things don't always go the way we think. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the brightness of today, the weather may change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We don't know. So long as the sun is shining and everything is nice, we will not know how the rainy day will be. But God, who sees the future, who knows everything, knows that tomorrow will not be as it is now. Who of us, by this time last year, knew that we will be carrying uh, masks, wearing, uh, wearing things, and sanitizing by this year? Did we know that? No. No. We were planning, looking in the future, looking and planning our own things. But, and now see where we are today. 
we can see very far, but God sees the end, even from the beginning. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Therefore, we can trust in Him. So, in this story, I want us to look a bit differently. This is talking about spiritual, I mean, uh, material expenditure, the investment that the uh, guy had. You took it and squandered it. And then he began to be in want. Things changed. The friends that were near him all the time to squander the money disappeared. And he was left alone. But if we want to look at it another way, we can look at it in, in this, looking at it spiritually, not within the, within the context of material, um, material things. God has given us something that is of very much importance, something that is an investment, and that is our lives. The time we have to be alive, that is an asset. The living, the, the living have something. Just what you have, the life you have, is an investment that is worth more than millions. Amen. Amen. The life, the fact that you are alive, is an investment that God has has for you. Some of us want to take that life into our hands. Just like the prodigal son asked, give me my own portion of my inheritance. Let me, let me control it the way I like. So that you don't interfere. Don't come in to interfere. Let me live my life as I like. In other words, we will tell God, yes, you have given me life just leave me the life that you have given me leave it to me don't have anything to do in my life don't have anything to do with my life let me do whatever i want to do with my life the praise that you have given me is fine i will take it and go very far from you so that i will not have your influence I don't want to have your control over me because there are so many things I want to enjoy. But when I come near you, I get hindrance, a hindrance. I can't enjoy this life to the maximum. I want to go far from you, far from your world, far from your people. I don't want to come to near you. I don't want to have fellowship with you because whenever I have, I feel like I cannot live the kind of life I want. Mm. Is that you? You may be here, but far away from God, mm. like a prodigal son. Far in your thinking, in your actions, in the way you see life. How near to God are you? Or how far away are you? Are you someone who is not comfortable in the presence of God? Not comfortable when we mention God. Not comfortable to go near God. To draw close to God. Because your presence near God or God's presence with, in you makes you uncomfortable. In, it makes you to feel that you are not enjoying certain things that you wanted to. And you want to leave. You want to go far as possible, as far as possible. The prodigal son wanted his life for himself. His, he wanted to live his life the way he liked. To spend the assets that he had, the, the value, the portion of inheritance, the way he liked, without the intervention of his parents, or parental intervention, even though the father loved him. 
he consented. He accepted to divide and say, son, this is your portion. Take and do whatever you like. God has given us the possibility to make a choice. And whatever choice we make, God respects it. He has the power to change things by force if he wanted. But that, not, that is not his nature. He gives you the right, just as he told Adam and uh, Eve, to give them the liberty to eat every kind of fruit in the garden and say, but of this tree, don't eat it. They were seeing the tree and they were deciding to eat or not to eat every day. They were seeing it. And when the serpent tempted them, it was their place to refuse or accept. God was just, God left them to exercise that free will. And that free will, he has not taken away from us. He lets us use our will to decide whether we we'll obey him or not. You have seen people who even insult God. People who believe in occultism, who believe even in Satan. God still allows them. They have the will. They have their, the right to do whatever. They are using their life the way they want. They want to use it in the way that God will not even have anything in their lives. They want to be as independent as possible. But how do they end? How do we want to end our lives? As the prodigal, this son, the, the lost son, as they say, or the prodigal son, went on, things changed. And they say he hired himself out. He became so, so bankrupt. He spent everything that he had. And there was no way else to do. There was no money left. So if we were in today's context, we would say that he was like living in the streets. He had no way to go and sleep because he had no money to rent or he didn't buy, he didn't invest, buy houses and so on. He hired himself out just to get food to eat. This is a person who had everything, but he decided to take life his own way, independently, not having learned the lessons of life, how to manage one's life. And he ended up this way. Verse 17, that is the turning point. Verse 17, when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, uh, King James says, and when he came to himself, so it was like a different spirit had taken over him. So that the decisions he was taking all along to run away from his father, to run away from home, a parental influence, to go his own way, it was, he was not in his senses. He was acting, but there was some motivating force that was controlling him. Some force, some spiritual, some deep force that would have taken over his senses his mind, and he was just acting. He was like a robot. You saw him, but it was not him who was the prime decision maker of his own life. So verse 17 is saying, but when he came to himself, when he came to his senses, it's like he was living in a dream, in a dream world. Then suddenly he woke up and looked at him and said, where am I? Or somebody who was drunk or under the influence of drugs. Then when he comes to his senses, he begins to think, 
Why am I this way? Where am I? Where did, why am I sleeping on the ground? So something happens when you come to your senses. Amen. Amen. And that is what I'm praying that we all come to our senses. Amen. No matter how far you have gone, our prayer will be, let us come to our senses to see that the life we were expecting, the life we want to live independent of God cannot work. The life we want to live apart from God cannot really work for us. It will end up putting us in a hole. It will end up putting us down in a prison. It will make us bankrupt. We will become the laughing stock of not only society, but we will end up battling. When he came to himself, what happened? He took a decision. He reflected back. When he came to his senses, his memory went back. How he used to live with the father. I'm sure the father had a lot of wealth and riches. So he reflected and said, verse 17, when he came to his sense himself or his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. My father's hired servants, the people that I was commanding them, commanding this boy, this uh, servant, come, my father wants you. And they will run, they will run, they will say, if it's a uh, content, they will say, oh, oh, uh, oh son. Or uh, the master's son is saying, the master wants us. He had authority. But now in this strange place, where he wanted to be free, nobody even knows him. Mm -hmm. Nobody even recognizes him as an important person. He's even starving to death. Mm -hmm. And he came to himself, he came to his senses and said, oh, look at me. I wanted to shoot high, but see where I am landed. If I don't do anything, I'm going to die here miserably. Mm. They will not even bury me. It will be like a street person has died. Just, they can already bury because they don't want me to smell. Mm -hmm. So nobody will even recognize my background. Nobody will know my father here. How many of my father's Hired servants have food to eat and even to throw some, to eat and to spare. Yet, even that food that my father's hired servant eat and throw some, I don't even have to eat. It means I'm so gone so low that I'm not even up to the standard of my father's servants. I, the father's son, I am now less than the hired servants. What has happened to me? And he gathered courage. Mm. Amen. Amen. There is a time that we need to gather courage and oh, face yes. the situation and take a decision that will save our lives. Amen. 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 When he gathered courage, he took a decision. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. Amen. Amen. That is the decision that changed the destiny of this dying son. He was dying, starving to death. They say he wanted to eat what they gave to the pigs, but nobody gave him. It means it was a purely capitalistic society that people did not have sentiments to a feeling for people. If you want to eat something, you must work for it. Even the food given to pigs. You don't have to eat it or dogs. Here, when I came here, I was shocked. The kind of food they were selling in the malls for dogs and cats. It was <laughs> in their own context, you will not find that. But in their own con the context, the food that they were given so that it should feed pigs 
they will not even want him to eat. That's what the Bible says. He mm. wanted to eat, but nobody even gave him the food that they would, a pig would eat. They didn't give him. If you want to eat, you must work and you take your salary and buy the food to eat. Don't take the food of the pigs and eat. You are shortening their rations. So it was a kind of strategy. Just to show how you can suffer when you are away from God. The devil doesn't give things for nothing. Eh? Sometimes we we'll think that if we are far from God, we will enjoy, we will have this and that and that. All the promises. But get there. And a certain time, you will begin to regret. But we will not regret in Jesus' name. We will not take that road. Mm -hmm. But this son came. I will, and said, I will arise. Even, even though I told the father, give my own part of inheritance, let me go and use it the way I like. I will, I'm ashamed, but I don't want to die here. Amen. Amen. I have to, it's a choice I have to make now. Either I will be ashamed to go back and I die here, or I go back, I carry my, I humble myself and go back to him and beg him, Father, have mercy on me. I did a wrong choice. Take me only to be like one of your servants mm. so that I will have my food to eat. I've lost the position of a son. Let me just be like one of your workers. That was his decision. He humbled himself, accepted the situation that he had failed, his project had failed, everything had deceived him, and he said, yes, but I remember, I remember my father has enough, enough to eat, to give the servants so that they live and eat, and I will even just go back to be one, like one of the servants, even if I've lost my position as a son, because I've squandered this living. Mm. Now, we need to think. When we leave the presence of God and things happen to us, the negative as well as the positive, especially the negative, they remind us something is happening. Think back where you have come back where you have uh, left. Think back, because you have gone far from me, that's why you are facing these things. Think back, come to your senses, and return to God. That's what God uses circumstances to tell us. Amen. Amen. Whenever you are living the presence of God and facing problems, it's not necessarily the enemy, it's not necessarily Satan who is attacking you. Sometimes God uses certain tools so that you will make you have come back to your senses. Amen. Amen. You will put all circles on your way so that you know that I've missed the way. Let me go back to my father and see so that he will make me see the uh, see progress. Come back to your senses. Amen. Come back to your senses. Amen. Amen. We have to take that decision like this prodigal son who was courageous. I will arise and go back to my father. Where have you left? Where have you left the father and taken your own course, your own life, your own direction? Look at your life. Are you in his presence? Do you dwell in the presence of God? Are you close to him? Do you fellowship with him? Or you are on your own? You have taken your own life into your hands. You live your own life the way you like. You need to come to your senses and turn back to God. Go to his presence. Live in his presence so that he will change the story of your life. Amen. 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 Some of us have not taken our lives completely. Maybe it's only part of our lives that we took into our hands. In that area, we are not close to God anymore. 
that area of our spiritual lives. We are not close to God anymore. We don't, he doesn't have any control over our lives in that area. Some of us, for some of us, it is the word of God. We have abandoned the word of God. We have become bankrupt. We have gone far away from the word of God so that it cannot help us. You know, the psalmist says, I hide your word. I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. And when we leave the word of God behind and go our own way, different philosophies will take its place. Different thoughts of men and people will replace it and we will stand a, will stand a chance to sin against God because his word is not there to give us power to overcome the temptation that we face every day in this life. Have you taken that time that you used to spend with the word of God, meditating on the word of God, and or reading the word of God, hearing the word of God, have you abandoned it and taking your own that time for yourself to do your own thing. Maybe you during that time you instead watch your TV, you are playing your games, video games, whatever. What are you doing with that time that you used to spend on the word of God? For someone, it may be a time of prayer that you used to have fellowship with God. You were in his presence. But at a certain time, you say, oh, this is not really paying off. This time that I spent with God in prayer is not really paying off. I need to live. I need to do something else. I need to take that time to be doing something else. And you have been running up and down. At the time that you want to, you have to pray, you are doing different things. Maybe a time that you... <clears throat> You were, uh, you were using to pray, say, an hour or more. You, you don't even have 30 minutes, even 15 minutes, because all that time has gone to different things. You have left the presence of God, which is a blessing, and you are gone. You need to take a decision that you are starving mm. in your prayer life. Starvation does not necessarily mean not eating physical food. You can, your prayer life can be starving. You are starving. You don't pray. You are empty. You are starving. You need to wake up and take a decision. I will begin to pray again. Amen. 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 I will begin to pray as I did before again. Amen. I will begin to evangelize as I did before again. Amen. I need, I will begin to come to fellowship with my brethren mm. as I used to. Amen. Some of us during this uh, pandemic, during the lockdown, we were longing to meet again. And after they permitted us to meet in June, some people have become so used to staying at home that they don't even want to come back to fellowship. It's time to say, I want to meet and fellowship with my brethren again. Mm. Amen. Amen. We need all these things to draw close to God. And what of the love? The, the love of the Lord. Some of us know how long, how much we love God. We desire him day and night. We were like, like conversing with him in a way that we could touch him. But after some time, the love of God grew cold, cold. It's like very far away, very far, and there's no phone to even reach him. The love of God needs to be rekindled in our lives. We need to ask God, rekindle that love in me. Let me love you again. 
as before. Amen. Amen. Let me be dedicated to you as before. Let me become committed to you. Committed to your service. We need to take a decision like this prodigal son. Arise. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. Make me like one of your higher servants. Let me just become like one of your cleaners in the house or your uh, a gardener or something that somebody that is just working for you. Don't consider me a son again. Make me one of your highest men. So, verse 20, not only did the decision come in mind, but he acted upon it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you want to do something good, which is fine. God brings us to consciousness, but it shouldn't end. It shouldn't end with a decision to act. We should take the action itself. Amen? Amen. Verse 20 says, So he got up and went to his father. That employment was still there for him to be feeding pigs. And then you will have the mercy of getting a small salary to feed himself from it. Oh, maybe you are just managing life. Mm. You are still surviving mm. under hard struggles. You are just surviving. But you should see a better future for yourself. Amen? Amen. He could continue for a time thinking that maybe the economic situation was going to change and you get money and then improve. But he said, no, if I continue, I will die. Let me act now. Let me stop this, uh, whatever they are giving me here. If I get, they pay me, instead of working another month to get money to eat, I will take that money and then pay my transport back. He planned, he said, no, I will get up. He got up and said, let me find I take, what I take here, I'm looking back. I have one way. My direction is one, one, focus. Back home. I'm going back to my father. Nothing stopped me on the way. Amen. Amen. If you take a decision back to God, you take a decision to reclaim your lost prayer life, your lost spiritual life, your lost time and fellowship with God. Whatever the devil has stolen from you or you have lost it through your own carelessness and decision making mechanism that you lost it, you can take it back and say from today, I am going back. I'm gaining back what I lost. Amen. Amen. And when he took that decision and went, guess what happened? As he was taking a step, God was already waiting for him. But, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. Mm. Amen. Amen. While you are taking the decision far away, still far away, God will take more steps towards you. Amen. If you take one step towards God, God takes ten towards you. Amen. 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 So don't remain where you are. If for one reason or in one area of your life you have heard from God, you have wandered from God, and your life has gone to a full stop or a standstill, turn back to God and start taking one step, you will see the progress. You will see how God will surprise you. Amen. God was waiting. The father was waiting. And they say the father saw him and had compassion. Amen. 
God has compassion on all of us who want to turn to Him. Oh, yes. Amen. It is not God's desire that we should suffer. Mm. It's not God's desire that we, we should be tormented oh, in this yes. life. God wants good, our good. God wants that we should live the best in this life and the best after this life. Amen. So don't fear to go back. And he turned back, the father ran to him and threw his arms around him and kissed him. That's verse 20. What love. I'm sure since he went and lost the money, Nobody could treat him this way, but the father still longed to have him back. Amen. Amen. Anyway, the son wanted to re to recount the, what he had been rehearsing to tell the father, no, father, I've seen. Yeah, he said it because it was in his heart. He knew his conscience was telling him he has done wrong, and he said, I'm no longer worthy. But did the father listen to the end? Mm -hmm. As he was going with the story, father said, but quick, the father said to the servant, quick, bring the best robe. Verse 22. Quick, bring the best robe and put a robe and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Maybe he, he went and the shoe had got bad and he couldn't buy any more. You know, when you are poor, they are, they are shoes easily betrayed mm -hmm. because they eat. As you are moving up and down, the, the friction will wear them, they'll get holes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his sandal had got torn and there was no way. So quick, bring a rock, put clothes on him. Yeah, the, the clothes had got torn, no shoes had got torn. Bring clothes on and uh, put on him. Bring a sandal and put on his feet. Put a ring on his finger to show authority. He had the authority. Amen. Those days, the ring was a sign of authority. Amen. 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 He regained authority as a son. Amen. Amen. He was not just a servant. He had not lost his position as the son. To the father, he remained his son, who was who had now learned about life and had come back. Hallelujah. Amen. God is waiting for us. Wherever we have come, however we have messed up, turn to him. Take the decision like the prodigal son. Turn around and God will surprise you. Let us stand. God will surprise you. You will find more things, better things, than you would ever have anywhere else. In this story, you will see they made a big dinner, a big feast to celebrate. And it was joy. The Bible says there's joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 Amen. who don't need to repent. If you have gone away in one dimension, repentance doesn't mean that you actually backslided. You are still the church, but actually you are backsliding, you are doing less in one area of your life than, another, uh, than you were doing before. You need to restore. You need to go back. Maybe you are not praying before, you are, as before. You are not close to God as before. You don't love God as before. You complain everything in church. You complain and it's like God doesn't mean much to you. You are not, you don't enjoy God like before. Ask God, restore me. Restore me to that position. Restore me to that position I have when I used to have fellowship with you. Restore me. Restore my prayer life. Restore my love to you. Restore whatever situation that you have lost. Ask God. He can restore it. Can you speak to the Lord? Can you speak to the Lord? Father, I glorify your holy name, Papa. Lord God, I pray in the name of For your word that you revealed to us this morning. Father, I'm conscious that I've gone astray in one way or another in my spiritual life, 
That's why I pray this morning, Father. That's why I'm coming back to you as a prodigal daughter, Father. Pray that you may restore to me, Lord, from the joy of my salvation. Wherever I fail, Lord, help me to stand back again. Is it the time I spend in your presence? King of King, help me. Is it my fellowshipping time with my brethren and church? My Father, help me to come back. Home. Is it my giving, Lord Father, Jesus? Lord, Is it my me. loving for my brethren? Father, restore me. I love for you, have me. Father, help me to I love for you, have come me. back to you and do according to your word, Lord Father. Restore to me. Father, that is my heart's desire, Father. That I should hey. act as a blessed daughter, Father. To you, Father, help me to come back completely to you. Help me to do according to your will, Father. Lord, let me decrease that you may increase in me, Father. Let me decrease that you may increase in me, Lord. Jesus. That you alone, Lord, shall be seen from me, Father. Help me, oh my God. Oh Lord, I thank you. I will pray. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that God said, I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord. They will be my people, and I will be their God. Amen. For they will return to me with all their heart. I will give them a heart to know me. Father, I pray, Lord, God, oh, yes. that you will give us a heart to know you. Amen. A heart to know you intimately. Amen. A heart to know you as Father. A heart to know you, O oh God, as the Almighty God who loves us, who cares for us, who has plans for us, plans of good and not of evil. Oh, yes. oh Lord God, I pray that you will give us a heart to know you. A heart, Lord God, that will seek you. A heart, Lord, that will seek to obey you. Oh, yes, my father. To have intimate fellowship with you yes. in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. To trust in you, oh God, my faith. Oh Lord God, a heart that will love fellowship with you and fellowship with one another. A heart that will love your word to meditate on it and to store it in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Oh, yes, my oh Lord, a heart that will have feeling, oh God, for others, compassion, and that will make us to evangelize to others. Lord God, give us a heart to know you more, Amen. a heart to love you more, Amen. a heart to serve you more. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Amen.